and welcome to yet another Arcnates live stream. Boy, did I mess up somewhere in the timing because I thought it was supposed to start in an hour. No, it already happened. Okay, so, you know, I thought it would help with Google. I was... Google was way wrong because it was supposed to... Okay, so let me get this straight. Right now it's 422. Google said this live stream was about to start in like 40-ish minutes from now. But obviously it happened four hours ago. So this is a late to party live stream reaction. Ah, why? Why is it so goddamn early? Like I loved it when it was in the evening slash night. Like why couldn't they do that? I don't understand. I'm actually really mad. I'm actually kind of bit peeved about that. I I don't understand. Was it because it's so far late that people lost their fucking minds last time? Was that it? Did people lose their fucking mind with the first anniversary stream? Is that why this was so earlier? Now you're gonna have people that are gonna lose their minds because it was too early. Uh. Yeah, I am actually kind of a little bit peeved that it was so early. It's like, the fuck? I, I, like, I actually looked this down. I even talked to other people. I honestly thought it was going to be 5 p.m. Central, you know, still st um, standard time, which would be like an hour, like 40-ish minutes from now. No. Uh, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about that a lot. I, I'm, I'm going to talk about it a lot because I'm pet peeved that it's like, really? This is why they should have had this up. They did not have this up. They did not have this stream up until th several hours before it started, or at least maybe a few minutes or an hour before it started. That's another thing you need to stop doing that. They need to stop doing that because unlike them, many other places and services do that so i actually know what time and i can best plan ahead whatever yeah yeah i i thought today we could just chill talk do daily and then stream no no of course not it, it, it'd be too simple anyway aside from that Good news is we have the stream here. Weird news, good news. We can actually see what the results are of some states. I kind of peeped a little bit at the JP stream that was earlier, uh, and you know I thought it to be a huge difference in time, but no. But I did kind of, kind of checked it out uh, just to see, you know, and uh, I, 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 like I. I saw some interesting, like, the only thing that was interesting that I saw was, like, who was the most used in consistency contract, and people were confused Gravel was there, and it's like, you guys are dumb. <laughs> if you're wondering why Gravel was there, I, 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 you were not that good in that event, is my guess, but at least you were not good, like, you did not think of using Gravel to bait wall, um, or, or, rust, or, rust hammer, there you go. Anyway, so it's at 10 a.m. UTC 7. Like, that is technically 5 p.m. for me. Uh, what? Oof. Okay. I I'm, I'm going to keep saying that because that is incorrect. That is so goddamn incorrect. Anyway, I got to stop myself for ranting and blowing these people's holes. Um, but yeah, of course, the live rundown or the recap, we have a half year recap, um, the new event preview, new soundtrack, new merch, and the special crossover. Um, if you guys don't already know, then you're about to know them. I think most people at this point already know. But for those that are don't know, then now you know that there's a collab. We'll get to it i guess i'll talk about stuff after the fact um but the one thing that i like that that piques my curiosity is the new merch hopefully there's actually something interesting i mean i just look at cn and jp and i'm like ian you need to step up your fudging game like all the merch i have is from cn 
But you see Kelsey or Kelsey right there? You, you can't you really can't. But yeah. I need to set up that game. Uh, so without further ado, hey, welcome to the stream, um, Arun. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna stop ramping about it. I'm still gonna be ranting. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna get into this. I don't know how things are. Okay. Uh, this is also volume testing. So let me know if it's okay. I'm gonna go about half right here. Does it sound pretty good for you guys? Also 30 minutes? So this is like less than an hour stream. Also, my goodness, they know what they're doing with Blaze right there. Um, it's interesting to see Nied, which makes sense. Blaze is an interesting deal. I don't know why they chose Blaze. Um, but anyway. It makes sense to see um, Nied. I don't know why Blaze is there. Uh, is I'm trying to look at these over here. Is this like foreshadowing of skins? I'm trying to see what that skin is or whatever that artwork is. I can't tell. So does it sound good to you guys? I'm, I'm, I'm going to probably raise it just a little bit more. For me, it's actually a lot louder. Um, let me move to 50. So I, I don't know if my face cam is going to really be covering something or some stuff like that, but we're just going to skip here. If it sounds good to you guys, then we're just going to skip. And if it sounds bad, I'm sorry, YouTube peeps. <laughs> Twitch had the chance. Twitch had the chance. So I'm really curious to see what they did for this. I, I, I want to know if they're going to start off with... Sorry about that. Uh, but yeah, let's continue on. Come on, OBS. Let me move it down to 720p. Because OBS is having a difficult time right now. I heard, I, I kind of heard, I kind of checked the comments a little bit and I heard that this was like very professional or they had professionals. So I'm really curious. Hi doctors, welcome to the Arknights 1.5 anniversary live stream. I'm your host today, Elliot. Hi everyone, I'm Alex. It's great to meet Arknights fans from all over the world. We are so excited to present to you guys what we have been working on for the past seven months. Seven First months? All, thank you for having me. I'm super excited to celebrate this milestone with all of you. Yeah, it's our 1.5 anniversary. I know it's kind of rare to hear that, but thanks everyone for playing, supporting, and loving Arcanites. And thank you for tuning in today. Seven yeah, months? As usual, we will start with some ritual inspection, talking about the in-game events we had in the first half of 2021, and share some interesting statistics with you all. Just check in how you were doing, you know? or review your accomplishments. Sounds good. Among all the events, there were many of them that I really enjoyed. Don't you worry. We will go through them one I love one how... Day. After that, we are gonna review... I, you can't see the mouse, but like, they, they, they're kind of hinting at stuff in the background. So, new event coming to Arknights. Maybe you can take a guess of what it is from the decor of the set scene today, if it's not too abstract. <laughs> well, I know the answer, but let's move on first. Here's a short video to help you guys for seven months. There we go. Enjoy. So a video to show the past seven months. The rerun. Okay. With thorns, my boy. And the, um, obviously really good skins. Gavial! The cheap face returns. A grinding breeze. Our girl Sutta. Camera is major at the blemish. Also, chapter eight. Probably one of the better sections. 
of course the latest one we just had doesn't seem like a lot but it gives me goosebumps every time when i watch those animation trailer i feel like i'm ready to fight okay doctors among the 11 events which one's your favorite please let us know by leaving a comment in the chat personally my favorite was episode 8 roaring flare oh that one yeah you know i spent a week just trying to finish the stages and the story the story was yeah. really well written i thought yeah uh, it might take a little bit of time, but it's definitely fun to watch. And it, it was it was our first time to see an animation embedded in the story, right? Yes, that part when Emiya picked up the sword mm. and transformed into a guard. I was <laughs> yeah. on fire. Maybe yeah, spoilers yeah. for those that haven't finished it yet. Gave you the great chief returns and Kaobi's funky mess the most. Ah, the oh, that, yeah, I feel like funky mess yeah. was I definitely. I that mode any time. I miss it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Moving to our retrospection, the first event following episode 7 was Heart of Surging Flame Rerun, right? Yes, that was the event where we first met Thorns, the master of Destrissa, and the operator... I love how they the kept Destrissa. Thank, thank goodness they kept what? it and changed it. meme with Thorns had Photoshop on different uh, operators' bodies? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> he oh, doesn't. Oh, God, don't remind me of that. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. He knows. He knows. He knows. Scotty's outfit. <laughs> oh yeah, that was ridiculous. Okay. Sorry, just saying. <laughs> okay, they know. Well, they know. Remember about the event. In addition to the memes of thorns. Uh, let me think. More outfits, definitely. And the Obsidian Festival was surely a blast. You know, D D D Emperor and alive until sunset. I actually there never finishing it and then fin working on it. And for those doctors, aside from run stage, last year, fun that one. Story and feel the vacation vibe, which is all I need right now. You remember you're still working. Because I never finished it when it first <laughs> came yeah. out. Sure. Moving on to the next one. Operation Blade. Yes. That was on fire. <laughs> yes. The I'm on the fire. Song, yeah, or just stay in the lobby for the song. Yeah, me too. I think the lyrics fit in really well with the contingency contract vibe. Mm -hmm. I loved it. Yes. And we do have some statistics to show you. Okay. This is where the good Bring shit is. Here comes the first one. The most used operator ranking in contingency contract season two. Operation Blade. Yes, I'm curious about that too. Let's start. Yes. Who are the top three? And the top huh. three are Tlaxis, Myrtle. Saria, okay, makes and sense. Myrtle. Saria. Wow. Congrats to Myrtle. Congrats. You're okay, I kind of see, but not on the permanent map. The of CC. And then let's take a look at this, this. permanent site, deserted factory. By the way. Okay, so now the permanent. Okay. On this site? Come on, please go easy on me. You know I'm not that good at challenging high risks. <laughs> all right, all right. Then let's check out how other doctors did in this operation. As we can see, more than 11% of doctors managed to reach risk 18. Well, okay, so risk 18 has 11%. I heard about that. It's, it's pretty much hidden. Um, but I got to risk fudge. What what risk did I go to? Actually, this is this is gonna be some quick um quick uh view back on stuff because i don't think i really went that far into it uh just because of i couldn't get to a certain point because i just didn't have units built and i just wasn't feeling it uh let me see here when was it uh c c or daily max did I? Did I? Question mark? Okay, I got risk 30 on CC3. Um, CC2? CC2? Oh, uh, risk 27. So I'm in the... 0.16 category. I'm in the 0.16 category for CC2, even though I 
could not get any further and i was like yeah hell no i'm not going any further well done my fellow doctors and more than one percent of doctors accomplished rex 23. moreover there were only 0.02 percent of doctors having reached contingency level 31. that's in this time legitimate players Last time CC one, it was not impossible. It was not possible to get Rose twenty eight and above. It was actually like if you got Rose twenty eight and above on CC one, that would be considered you'd be hacking. You, you would not. You, there was no way you could have done that. Like it was legitimately no way you could do it. Same players, instantaneous. If you got higher than Rose twenty eight, you'd instantly be considered as a cheater. Like, you, there's no way you could have done that. So when they showed that graph last time, that was like the thumbnail of the one, first anniversary, uh, I called out on it with the thumbnail. I was like, huh? What the fuck? Uh, but this is legit. Um, CC, all, I think CCs from now on, it is possible to max risk. It's just extremely challenging, especially CC4 here. Boy, I think there's gonna be a point zero 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 point zero one percent. I'm gonna call it right now. Like that is just how low I feel like CC four max risk is. Like Ike Blake or like or like Leviathan can't do it. He he rage crit yesterday. So that's a heads up. I don't think that many people are gonna be able to get higher risk in this CC currently. Uh, but I'm gonna shit up now. Incredible. How did they do that? I wonder about that too. <laughs> Maybe those doctors didn't lose their sanity. Mm, that sounds reasonable. Those doctors who had reached risk 31, you are all suspected. <laughs> I'll have a meeting about that later. <laughs> all right, all right. Jokes aside, that's really amazing. Press F to send all our respect to those fellow doctors. Respect. And the next event is Gavio, the great chief return that is one of my favorites. Welcome to the jungle. You made another meme. No, not at this time. But I would think about the music. I, I did like a lot of music of this event. To be the pilot of the massive mechanical monster made by Zumama. That's super dope. Man, I'm jealous of the hype. I didn't know how I feel. I was going about the event. So I, I like the event. Aside from the alligator brawlers, the event was dope. <laughs> alligator brawlers. Alligator brawlers. Brawlers, there we go. Get the hell out of here. I hate them. You know they think they're, they are stupid. Meme about these two. These <laughs> okay, just kidding. We actually got some data about KOB's fungimus that we would like to share with doctors. Are you ready? Okay, so it's so the English version of KOB's mus. KOB's fungimus. Now, I'm curious about this data. Let's check it out. Okay. First. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. This is definitely different. This is definitely different than the JP version. Okay, so they did actually separate the two. I was kind of curious if they were going to do that or not. Um, but there is 1.2 billion biscuits people got in total. Amongst the story green, sweetest fume, a skycaper tower made of honey biscuits points to the fervent. Honey biscuits that all doctors obtain is more than one billion. Wow, over a billion. I'm sure Kyobi will appreciate this number. <laughs> He'll be happy about that. Moving on to the next part. The cunning merchant sold around 12 million items in total to all He's a rich dude. Around 100 million original wow. ingots. This merchant knows how to make money, right? True. And next part, during Doctor's Adventure, Rhodes Island provided more than one million water boilers in total. That's sweet. Thanks to the water boiler, it brings me life and hope. For it, real. It could be a totem for doctors. Yeah, it's kind of like a soulmate. It reminds me to never give up hope. <laughs> if you say so. Okay. And in KOB's Funky Mist, doctors had taken nearly 400,000 collectibles from Duck Lord and around 540,000 collectibles from Duck Lord's bodyguard. Poor Duck Lord. <coughs> what we yeah. take, we gain from others. Don't be like that. That's Tallulah's word. I'm just saying it's true. Okay. Well, next. In Lost Victoria Night, more than 32% of doctors chose the left half of the coconut shell. Yes, and around 22% of doctors chose the other half. Yes, and more than 46% of doctors chose to ask the knight rhetorically. 
That part reminds me, what really is the sacred Originium grenade? Hmm, don't ask me, I also want to know. <laughs> All right, now we have received a complaint from Big Bob. In <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, uh, he's definitely got the title of the most bullied. 70, 70 million most bullied. Slugs for that. 77 million. Well, that's quite a job. <laughs> Okay, Big Bob just wants to live a peaceful life. Please, doctors. The next one, in damsel in distress, doctors chose to help her for more than 300 times, 300,000 times in total. Yep, it's great to see so many kind-hearted doctors. Yes, and those bad guys also paid the price for their lives. Doctors knocked down nearly one and a half sturdily, one and a half million sturdily built men in total. You have, you gotta pay for what you've done. That's the rule. I agree. All right, we also had some special operators to help us in KOB's Funky Mist, right? Yes, Storm Eye, Touch, Sharp, and other operators. Mm. They all helped me a lot during this event. Yeah. Now let's see how many times they helped doctors throughout the event. So. It was more than one and a half I didn't really use up all too much. I don't know. It was one of those weird instances where it's like I was thinking of using them, but I never really did. Because I eventually found an idea. Okay. Now, right. Moving on to the last part, at the end of KOB's Funky Mist, there were 106 doctors who cleared the stage without blocking Ross. I was one of them! Gravestone and frozen. I was one custody. of them! That is a great accomplishment. How did they I was that? one of them! I have no idea. Maybe it's a miracle. I am Maybe one of those 106 wait, so doctors. Wrong. I believe you also have a questionnaire about KOB's fungus, right? Yeah, I was one of those doctors. Data from the I, I was one of those doctors, guys. First part, the operators that doctors deployed for the I am the 106th doctor. I actually have the video on YouTube if you guys are curious about that. Mayor! Yes. Operators that can summon units are great to use in Fungamist for sure. I agree. Really? Then let's see who's the second place. It is Thorns. Really? Okay, this is definitely different than JP. His third skill was definitely rampaging in Fungamist. Really? And finally, first place, Scene. Oh, that's somewhat unexpected. Oh. Okay, this is definitely unexpected. Um, I thought Thorns would be first, but the most deployed operators for the first time. I thought I don't know how they how that's worded and how that contributes, but uh okay. I'm kind of surprised. I thought maybe Thorns would be first, but seeing in there makes sense. Expected, makes sense. Believe it. It's the data. And seen as the event bonus operator from Operation Blade, that might explain a lot. Yeah, well, that sounds cool for scene. Congratulations. Congratulations. Now, the MBO is known as the most. Okay, maybe not. Uh, maybe I'm incorrect. In Ignore me. Let me see though. Silver Ash. Okay. Reasonable. Maybe not. Maybe it's the same as JP. I don't know. There's some things that were different than JP, so I'm gonna assume it's a little bit different. Second place goes to Seria. Another operator that all skills of hers can help you during the Okay, I think this is still different, so I'm gonna shut up now. MBO. It is Thorns. They did top ten. He deserves the first place. Um KLB was like ninth in JP. Range, and his self-healing talent can help you clear a lot of stages in this event. Yep, he definitely is the MVP. Hmm. So in KOB's funky mist, the ending doctors gets the most is Wait, wait, wait. There was an ending? What are we talking about? There were more than one ending. Did you miss anything? <laughs> really? I guess I missed a lot of fun. Yes, sure you did. Okay. The ending doctors get the most is Dust of Dreams. Oh, ah, yeah? I'll have to check out some of the doctor's recordings on social media. You should. Here come the three hardest stages in KOB's Funky Mist. Let's see. Master's Colossus, Baron's Cadet, and Fanatic Siege. Colossus. Yeah, let's be real here. Master's Colossus, that Colossus is on some high drugs in his BS. Because he does not give a fuck who he targets, does not matter which last you deployed, 
he gives no flying fucks. He just does what he does. And he does a good jam, got good goddamn job doing it. That's all I can really say when playing that event so many times over. That molasses masterless colossus. Boy, that colossus is hot god material. He he knows he knows what he's doing. Okay. Second, Baron's Cat, it makes sense. Um, but I, there's some ways I dealt with it, even without like that one definitely is the hardest because it's very it's just because of how it's made. It's very high end stage, in my opinion. Um, I don't remember about the Fanatic Siege though. Ah, those stage names just brought back some old memories. Well, I, I don't remember what Fanatic Siege was again. Happy memories. <laughs> yeah, let's move on. Okay, next we are moving on to Rewinding Breeze. Surter's coming. Calm down, Surter's great. She makes our lives much easier. Grateful for that. But we did have stories about many other operators in this event, remember? True. In mm -hmm. Rewinding Breeze, we learned about Soda, Irene, Mint, and April yeah. for the first time. I remember Mudrock was in the story oh, yeah, too, yeah. Yeah, before yeah. she officially joined Rose Island, right? I remember that. And also, Fenton's story was quite impressive. I feel like it was a great experience for me to learn about the operator's past through those stories. Absolutely agree. Some great stories. Mm. Then the next event is Maria Nero. Wow, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 24th Casimir's Major. God, stop it, please. I feel like the event lobby music starts buzzing around my head. <laughs> <laughs> I know you love it. Of course. <laughs> the story about a Casimir's Major was so exciting. We were there witnessing how Blamishine overcame every strong competitor. Yes. I also love the last part about how her elder sister, Margaret Nell, suddenly broke into the arena and fought against the Withered Knight and Corrupted Knight at the same time. Yes, the story of this event was... I, I like how they just completed at least spoiler, but I guess at this point it's already been over with, so it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter too much. She is both Blamishine and Ner Nero's aunt, you know? And Allstar and Bubble. I love this event. Story, Bubble? Music, oh, no. Allstar. Oh, and the outfit, anyway. Phantom's outfit, the classic. Hmm. One of the oh no, not though! Talk about the Halloween skin! Please don't! Here it is, Roaring Flare, my favorite episode so far. Mm. And this is also the climax of the main story, the final battle between Rose Island and Reunion. Yes, I still remember how Amiya and Chen fought together against Kalula. Oh, you mean the double dragon scene? Yeah, of course. When The moment when Amiya pulled out Ying Xiao from the flames. I felt ignited by that flame. <laughs> the transformation scene was meaningful. Uh, it, yeah, do remember really good ending to the first uh, main story. I can't read into the, se the second arc because I think without some people describing it, I'm like, that sounds fucking awesome. Because I didn't realize there's so much going to happen in Jet's Night. Otherwise, it's just going to be Siege, but there's a lot more in play. And powerful. She is a great sniper with a wide attack range. Yeah, I was shocked when I saw Mudrock's face under her armor for the first time. Well, I bet you wouldn't believe that face belongs to Mudrock when we were still in Volume 1. Yeah, I was expecting something a bit scarier than that. Scarier? Is it like, your grandma bond seems fine, but now it's mine? <laughs> oh, stop it, don't remind me of that. Now, let's move on to the next. All right, all right. Code of Brawry Run. Yes, that was a cool event. I like the story about the penguin logistics. Penguin logistics. I actually finished it from the first time as well. Yeah. Got a bro. Do you remember the first time it, it, it was one of those events that I kind of was coming back to the game. His shield was killing me at that time. Yes, but this time we have Surter. Yes, it was like revenge time. I just dropped my Surter in front of the Rack King and clicked the Twilight button. <laughs> then everything was done. Don't do that. Thank you, Soto. You are my hero. Okay, okay. Now we all know that you are believing in Soto's supremacy. Then, the next event was the WWF collaboration. The Good shit. The event. Collaborating with WWF. What can I say? Amazing. In this collaboration event, Arknights and WWF were working together to raise funds and public awareness for nature. Also, we had a new operator, Pure Stream, remember? And a free Cliff Hearts outfit in-game. Great outfit. Indeed. 
And besides, we had released a vlog and a documentary to show you WWF's conservation efforts in the Wollong Nature Reserve. Yes, that vlog and documentary were impressive. Mm -hmm. I loved seeing the natural environment with those snow leopards. They were so cute. Yes, and as for now, we are still calculating the total donation amounts, which will include the donation from the Japanese and Korean server as well. So it Good shit. some time, but we will share the number with all of you after the calculation is done. Yes, please be patient and pay attention to the official social media accounts. Moving on to the next CC3 Contingency Contract Season 3 Operation Cinder. Guess what? I've got my bagpipe outfit in Operation Cinder. You know, the bagpack outfit is stunning. I believe that outfit must be one of the reasons why so many doctors were playing so hard. Yeah, I really wanted to get it. Mm -hmm. Well, we also have some statistics from Operation Cinder to share with you. Let's take a look at them. Sure. Mm -hmm. So, in Contingency Contract Season 3 Operation Cinder, who will be the top three most used operators? Okay, Sir. do you think this list would fit our expectations? I mean, those Maybe. operators Sir. must be really active throughout the season. Plus, that's most... There's Nightingale, Lucaria, Myrtle, Now, it's time backpipe. to show the top three operators. Let's see who they are. Okay, let's see. Number three, Surter. Wow, that's amazing. M yeah, yeah, Surter yeah. Number three. Yeah, you think she'll be the top one. <laughs> okay, well, the second place goes to Seria. Okay, I Myrtle? Think that sounds reasonable to me. Who There's a gonna be Myrtle. One? It's probably gonna be Myrtle. Maybe you have the answer. Number Myrtle. One is Myrtle. Yeah. Oh, Myrtle yeah. again. The little queen of CC. You are right. She deserves the gold medal. Yes, okay. Well, what else do we have? Then we also have the data to show you the contingency level that doctors achieve. Okay, so I got risk 30 a lot less percentage because I feel like I was 0.16. Now I was in the 0.29%. I uh, got yeah, risk 30. I was like, nah, I'm not getting any further up. I'm not. I'm done. I'm done. Um, because there's a lot of it was RNG. A lot of it was RNG, and I just didn't have the units built. I feel like CC3 was probably the easiest to max risk so far, and will probably be that way. Um, and I think just overall, I think it is. I think it is the easiest CC to max by far to date. Um, so point point fifteen percent legit. I can understand that, but yeah, point 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 twenty three percent point three percent. Um, but yeah. Okay, so this 25 was 1.16. Okay. So yeah, 15%, roughly 16% got Risk 18. So a lot of people, I guess, did really go for Backpipe Skins. Yeah, Backpipe Skins is really nice. Operation Cinder. Let's see what the data will be this time. Okay. So, for a contingency level 18, nearly 16% of doctors met this challenge. For doctors who want the bagpipe outfit, getting to that level won't stop you, right? <laughs> you really love that outfit, I can tell. Okay, and more than 1% of doctors accomplished Rix 25. And moreover, 0.15% of doctors reached Risk 33. That's crazy. Yeah, they just made it. No matter what difficulties they were facing, they just managed to find a way out. What can I say? Press F again for those doctors. Yeah, they deserve it. They definitely earned the respect. All right, moving on to the next event. Now we are getting to Mansfield, Mansfield Break. Break event. This event was pretty cool. I like prison break stories. The main, um, not, the, the event, starting point yeah, of me actually working hard on that, you call it, free break out. And besides, Saria's prison guard outfit, the law. That's just cool. Mm. Be mm -hmm. careful, doctors. Saria is watching you. And the new Icefield messenger outfits are great as well. Mm -hmm. I love the weedy one. What about you? Hmm. Elysium Snowy Echo. Let me guess. Because of all the water boilers it holds? <laughs> you got the point. Okay. I guess right. Then, moving on to the next one, we have... Beyond, Beyond here. here. That literally oh, just ended. I quite like the story from this event. Mm, me too. And we also had three cute operators coming to Rose Island. Beanstalk, Iris, and R. Chattel. Also, the Cambrian series outfits. Hmm. Right, right. How could you watch this and cringe stream? I'm just talking about stuff and enjoying it. I 
missed a chance for sure. That outfit was a must get. In this you game. watched it, so I don't now, know what you're complaining about. Events, contingency contracts is in four. Operation Lease. Well, we're currently at that right now. What contingency level doctors are going to reach this time? Mm, me too. And don't forget to join the event and redeem the event bonus operator two year. Yes, don't forget it. I, I, like I said, max risk could be like 0 0.1, 0 0.01. Have you ever heard not many people are going to get it. Chinese story called Golden Millet Dream. Huang Liang Yi Meng. Huang Liang Yi Meng. Yes. Okay. Have you ever heard? Tell us about it. Okay. The story is about a Dang Yanao scholar taken in by a tavern owner. Then he fell asleep, dreaming about getting fame, falling in love, raising kids, and having all the best thing in the life. But suddenly, he woke up and realized all oh, that was only a dream. And the pan of the miller the tavern owner made for him when he fell asleep was still cooking on the fire. Mm. You didn't just tell us that story for nothing, right? Mm -hmm. The ancient Chinese story in the dream. Are you saying the new event is going to take place in Yen? Well, you will know it very soon. Let's watch our video first. Okay, pretty much just four shows that Shen Xin. Dusk is here. Tis. Our first altar, Mr. Nothing. Hey, hope you get nothing on your summons. Anyway, Saga. I heard a lot about her S3. I don't know. We'll see how that is. script where the JP stream is already reading is good but they don't feel like reading hmm. and then the fucking amazing skins coming out with Nian Hung looking fantastic probably the best skin arc the best and then whispering which is for free really nice skin And then also the lottery tickets and more operation records. I'm still trying to do the others. Uh, I'm trying to get around to it so I can. Now, technically, they're already at store, right? Or is that just a new set? Huh. Welcome back, doctors. Did you enjoy the event trailer? Some of you might have guessed it right. The new event coming to Arcanites is Who is Real? Which will be officially released on July 30th. I Eight mean, days, pretty much a week. Was used in the trailer. It was so next perfect. Friday. The overall aesthetic was just on point. I agree. Huge thanks to the development team for trying so hard to bring a new art style to Arcanites. Seeing all this ancient Chinese architecture made me wonder how long they must have spent to blend this art style into the world. Hmm. I know this event might seem a little bit different from the previous one, but we definitely want to try different things to bring doctors new experiences. But it's also very reasonable because the story takes place in a world of painting, you know? How so? Is it something we can mention in the live stream? Um, Wait, I know you're gonna say, <laughs> I don't wanna spoil the surprise for the doctors, blah, blah, blah. Well, I can say that the story starts off as two operators commissioned by Nian and embarking on a journey looking for someone. You know you didn't say anything, right? The only <laughs> name I heard in this sentence was Nian. We basically just saw them in the trailer. Come on. I saw Lava, a girl named Dusk, and all of them. Lava? I'm trying to save a surprise for later. You should have said Purgatory. I will introduce them later. And actually, there's a character in the story that didn't show up in the video. Which one? 
ここだよここだよ、oh, <laughs> Seriously, cruise. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, I should have given you a heads up. <laughs> okay, why don't we、uh, start introducing the event right away? Okay. The first thing we want to show you guys is the new mechanism, Mark of Hui and Ming. Mechanicism? Mechanic? As you can see in the video, the operator's place on the tiles will gain the same attribute as the mark. It looks cool. It's kind of like the. You can't. You can barely tell it that. Why did they use that? Oh no! That is like bad position. They should have used the top one or something. That you can't tell. Should try to deploy the defenders on the same marks. Oh,、uh, why? Why? I, I know they show on the enemies, marks, but oh, you can't tell from the end. Oh,、cool. uh. and do know that enemies who pass through the mark of Hui and Ming will switch their marks to the other. Okay, that gives more chance. But yeah, they, they pretty much if they go through the mark, they change. You can change them manually with a paintbrush, but you get limited per battle. Smarty. Smarty. The name is pretty to the point. Yeah. Yeah. Kamikaze opposite color. That's all you need to know about them. Fellow ink spirits with opposite attributes. Hmm. Well, I wouldn't want to see that. Hmm. But I think doctors will find a way to prevent that. You know, exploding from each other. Okay. The next one is Blindy. It says that it doesn't get along with Stabby. Who's Stabby? Hmm. I believe it is another enemy. <laughs> okay, well let's see what Blindy can do. Oh, it can only be blocked by units of the same attribute.、Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people were angry or annoyed at this mechanic, and it's like there's some people that just couldn't understand it at first. It's like really? Come on, <laughs> we will have more important stuff to introduce. Something that doctors will be most interested in. It's got to be new operators. Sure. Mm-hmm. Purgatory. Isn't this this is lava with a completely new look, right? I think I've seen her in Ancient Forge before. Bingo. This is the first alternate operator in Arknights. Lava the Purgatory. Alternate operator.、Mm. Sounds interesting. Is it similar to Amir's transformation?、Mm, not really. Alternate operator is the grown up.、Uh, it just see some of your very familiar operators or another grown up version. That's interesting that they mentioned that.、Um, they also has alternate version. I, I like alter a lot more, but that's just me. Third side of them. That's awesome. It sounds like doctors and operators are growing together.、Mm, surely they are.、Mm. Makes me wonder. Makes me wonder. I do believe there will be a time skip. I think there will definitely be a time skip eventually at some point. Are you referring to her skill, Ring of Hellfire? Exactly. Lava envelopes an ally and herself within a ring of fire with her second skill, inflicting arc damage every second to all surrounding enemies. And her talent grants her lots of SP, and thus enables her to activate the skill soon after her deployment. It looks like some beautiful fireworks. It must be difficult to get her, right? Nah, -uh. you can get Lava the Purgatory for free during the event. You gotta be kidding me! The first ever alternate operator is free for everyone. Yes, the point is that everyone has the chance to witness Lava's growth. But let's move on to the next operator. A fan, Chinese copper coin, fortune stick. Is he a Taoist master? <laughs> More of a fortune teller, I'd say.、Mm. His name's very special too, Mister Nothing, Nothing. Like he has nothing to tell. Well, I do think that his name might come from a Chinese idiom. Zi shi wu you, zi shi wu you. I know you want to practice your Chinese, Alex. Zi shi wu you, yeah. Yes, great. Yeah, <laughs> okay, <laughs> great. something like that. Yeah, the idiom can mean unrealistic or made-up stories or figures. His power is still worth nothing despite his name. As a Yan martial arts expert, he uses a Yin Yang fan and works as a specialist in Rhode Island. By the way, have you ever heard about any martial arts, maybe Chinese ones, kung fu? <laughs> yes, that one. We already have Wai Fu who knows kung fu in Rhode Island, right?、Mm. But compared to Wai Fu, who's always very serious and strict, Mister Nothing has a more sophisticated personality, and he is slippery to some extent. 
It sounds like his first skill, cautious retreat. It is said that when the skill is activated, Mr. Nothing becomes less likely to be targeted by enemy attacks mm -hmm. and will restore HP after his own HP is below a certain percentage. Hmm. Well, that's right. But Mr. Nothing is also a man who you can count on. Let's see what he can do when he gets serious. Oh my. That seems to be three kinds of colors of aura around him. That's amazing. Yes, yes. And when he activates his second skill, Wax and Win, one out of the three effects will be rendered. Yeah, pretty much he gets a certain stat boost depending upon which version. You can reactivate it to your benefits, but there's a bit of RNG involved. Now let's take a look at the six star operator. Mm -hmm. Uh, is she a monk? A cute monk, though. Mm -hmm. This is Operator Saga, who plays an important role in Who is Real story. She's a wandering monk from Higashi. A vanguard, as she is. Yeah. Saga deals a great amount of damage to the enemies. Her talent, Clear Mind, enables her to gain physical dodge and the ability to restore HP for seconds. Know that this effect can only be activated once after her HP falls below a certain percentage. Sounds like an all-round vanguard who can generate DP, deal high damage, and also take damage from enemies. Yes, and when her blades out, as you can see in the video, there are red leaves falling from her blade. I love this effect. Like it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wait, I saw a red symbol on that enemy. Hmm. Is that some kind of new debuff? Well, that's another interesting fact. See, as a monk, Saga tries her best not to hurt lives. Her talent preaching will leave the enemy with one HP and inflict critically wounded to enemies. These enemies will automatically die after a short while, and if they are killed by allies, the attacker will gain SP. So you mean she never kills enemies, but it's actually very low volume. Why is that now? In the video, doesn't she just turn those enemies into ash? Well, that's true, but that's her second skill, cleansing evil. Very low volume for some reason. Enemies within a cross area, and then eliminates enemies that are critically wounded. Okay, now, now we still have our final guest to show up. Finally, I guess dusk is coming. Ta-da! Let's meet up our new six-star caster, Dusk. She's gorgeous. Well, from her hands, tail, horns, and eyes, I guess she is the one Nian is looking for. Or is she related to Nian? Well, I said nothing. That's just your speculation. Oh, come <laughs> on. Enlighten me a bit. Well, I will leave that to the event story. Go enjoy yourself. So much suspense. From her appearance, though, she looks like a mysterious figure who's just descended from a traditional Chinese painting. Her hair spreads itself out like ink dropped in water. Mm -hmm. I believe the devs and arts really have given all out on this character. You know what? Even her skill attacks come with different ink flowing visual effects. Amazing ink flowing. My wild guess is that she's a caster with AOE attacks. Am I right? Bingo, you were right. And she's not just a caster with AOE attack. She is the caster capable of AOE attacks, crowd control, DPS, and summoning. She's also a summoner. Yes, her first... Uh, okay, so I know the official Arknights Discord, there are people who dis like to d hate this character, especially the word DPS, because they think AoEs are shit. And to a certain degree, I understand, but at the same time, if you don't know how to use them, you're going to think that they're shit. I think Dusk is probably a really good operator, just a lot of people sleep on her. I actually do believe that. I mean, people start like to compare with Dusk and use Dusk, so not Dusk, um... Starter. So it's kind of like, well, what's the point of comparing or talking about it if you just get to use Surter for DPS calculations? Yeah. Two skills boost her attack range and AOE arts damage in different ways. I love her history. I think it's pretty cool that she can pretty much summon pretty much extra meat shields. After deployment. So I think in certain generations it could come in clutch, but I think the only issue with three feelings on a battlefield at the same time is that she's just high DP. I think that's the main issue with AOE casters, it's just because they're high DP. If they weren't as high DP, I think people would be more willing to put them higher or use them more. Or refreshes a feeling at the location of her targets with each of her strikes. 
That sounds like a one-man army. What's more, her talents ensure that she will gain a stack of attack increase for each foe she or her freelings take down. With her attack buff stacking up to the limit, she just eliminates those who stand in her way in one stroke. I think in a way, she could be a really good operator. Like a really good operator. That's what I'm gonna talk about. There will be a limited headhunting radar banner, Hidden Moon, which includes Saga and Dusk. Sounds like I'll have to save up my Originium Prime. <laughs> Me too. Then the following news will definitely okay. excite you. Free tenfold, about twenty-four free pulls, and all sorts of stuff. So main free to play, main green dusk, free to play. We'll see what happens. Don't forget to log in and use the permit. Absolutely, don't forget to pick up your free ten roll permit. And what's more, doctors can pull one free head hunting every day during the fourteen day event, which will be fourteen free pulls if you log in daily. Plus the free ten roll permit. There'll be a total of 24 free pulls for every doctor in the event. Yes. And Alex, do you recall that I said doctors can get lava the purgatory for free during the events? Yes, I do. Yes. During the events, doctors could obtain Dusk Instinct from event stages, which can be... There's just a lot of nice few words. Lava, the Nothing too crazy, but don't nice. I don't remember what the state, what you want to farm in this. And... Some special gifts will be sent to all the Oh yeah, this. Like the, like a four hour period that's sending rewards to everyone. Yes. Those will be included along with some other materials. That's what we can call the good stuff. No no no. That's called a part of the good stuff. What? <laughs> we have Longman Lucky Strips. Ah, I might need to save all my luck in the hidden moon banner. No. During the event, you can get two lottery trials after your daily login. Between the lotteries you pick, the one with the higher amount of random will be the final daily reward. Determined by the higher amount. I love this rule. Yes, then you're gonna love it more. If the amount of random in your daily reward is less than 400, let's say, you will be granted an extra trial the next day. Wow, my things are looking up. Yes. Please notice that all the daily trials will be refreshed the next day and cannot be accumulated. Yes, doctors, please make sure you pick up the lucky reward every day. Mm -hmm. And next. There's still a next. Yes. Oh, let's... Then let's see the next. Ah, yep. the snowy surprise login event. Mm -hmm. They they went the all out for the dusk of it. And then... I'm not gonna say it yet. For those that don't know. We're so cool, buddy. By the way, Chi Pao is a traditional Chinese dress. You know what? Forget the cool. How can you calm down when you see that? Okay. And it is available on day 13 for free. Yes, and for free. Oh my god. No, no, we have more than just one new outfit. Let's check them out. Mm hmm. All nice skins. <laughs> I don't doubt a bit. Okay. Lian's Chi Pao outfit is awesome. <laughs> I just want to give all my praise to this outfit. Yeah. Besides, Ax and Hung's outfits look pretty cool as well. Yeah. Somehow, Hung's Jezza driver turns out to be the opposite. Meaning. <laughs> I know. And Ark's outfit is both classic and fashionable. Yes. And don't forget, there's also a new outfit for the Doran. Mm-hmm. Dancing Court. I don't think I'm gonna worry about that too much, but it's cool, I guess. Yes. And doesn't it feel peaceful? Looking at it, it looks like a beautiful setting for an art studio. Mm -hmm. Look at them. Nian, Ak, and Hang are in the art studio, right? Yeah, and Nian is wearing the traditional Chinese dress. Mm, and Ak is just like sitting on a chair. Oh, and the phone is ringing. <laughs> it's his mom <laughs> saying, Ak. Come home for dinner. Oh, come on. I'm gonna get this outfit. And all the three of them. Rumor has it that Tanxing Court was just one of the many layouts for Dusk's art studio. Well, the only thing I could guarantee is that it is just the beginning of Dusk's legend. Mm. Can't you just reveal some more for us now? Mm, nope. But there is something that could be revealed. The new medal set for mm. Who is Real. Quite a sense of art, don't you think? Yeah. They're not they're cool. They're cool. Challenges. I can't stand their cringe level. Huh? It's okay, bro. It's okay. We can get through this. We're almost done. We're almost done. You can get through it, soldier. After all, that's not the only challenge. 
There's more. You bet. Ah, a new annihilation stage. That's right. Abandoned mine will later replace the current annihilation stage, frozen abandoned city. Wait. Well, at what? Least there will be tons of resources to wait, 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 wait. I don't think it's done. Wait, I, what? When? We do have. I need to actually check that out. I actually need to check that out because I didn't think it were already. It's already almost done. Contains multiple materials, original prime, and a temporal headhunting permit. Sounds like a great deal. Absolutely. Okay, I believe that is all for the new updates. Yes. Hmm. Yes and no. I actually still have a surprise for you guys. A special campaign, I think. Hmm. Yes. We created a song especially for Who Is Real with a group of talented musicians. I was talking about um. And today we are going to show you guys the, the uh, annihilation the thing, but nothing about the stream itself. Because I already went over the stuff that they have in description. Of never give up, produced by Stay Loose, featuring Sarah, and the music video is directed and produced by Si Han Lin, an independent visual artist who has been nominated for several arts awards including the Ottawa International Animation Festival Award. Enjoy! Did you enjoy the teaser? I did. I can't wait to watch the whole thing. Anyway, yeah, I guess. <laughs> the visual design, that fluid ink animation, and the music, I'm sure. Even though we just heard a short clip, that voice was gorgeous. Well, the complete soundtrack will be released after our event is live. Please pay attention to our social media okay. for more information. Yeah, looking Can I try to check it out? Yeah, stay tuned. And I have to say thank you to the music production team that put the art piece together. Also, Sihan has added her unique art style and flavor to the video. It was a great experience to work with everyone on this project. Yes, doctors, please press F to show your appreciation to the team if you thought the same as us. Appreciate it. Okay, moving on to the next part. We are gonna talk about some merch. New merch. Ah, what's this about? During the past half of the year, we were trying to expand the categories and types of the merchandise for doctors to pick from Yeah? Uh, where? 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 From the Yostar official store, we prepared some special merch for the previous events and also Who is Real? Wanna check them out? Sure! Mm -hmm. I'm not skipping this! I'm curious! Cause I'm gonna bash them if they can't the <laughs> get a good job! Oh, look at them. Nice. Oh, pretty easy that's to unique. I feel a real connection to these operators. Yeah, I feel yeah. Let's look that look at them one by one. That surder with the ice cream really caught my eyes. Yeah, so Okay, really that's cool. That's cool. That's I unique. That's unique. Buff after eating it. <laughs> How strong would that be? Okay, in the same set, Flammy Shine seems like holding something. Is that a doll of no? Oh yeah, yeah. That's okay. cute and unique. Oh, she looks. And her sister has always been a role model for her, right? She truly is. <laughs> and the two fellows over there seem quiet. Mm. Ros Montis and Mudrock. Ros is taking notes there. It's so cute. It's like she's taking notes on doctor's orders. Yeah, she has always been a good kid. And Mudrock below is just. Okay, so far I can't bash them. They're doing something unique I have not seen yet. On the CN or JV, so. And the last I like it that they're trying to. They just joined Rhode Island not long ago. They need to do better. He's like a strong and sturdy guy, but he's actually a gentleman. Reading a book, tasting wine, just chilling, really. And for our cheddar, we've learned that she's a master of brewing, right? Yes. When can we try some? <laughs> Chill. Later, okay? We have more to introduce. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. The next item we have is a rowing. Oh! For doctors to have a oh, that that. Woo! I must. I I think I must. Story, you know, if it wasn't for the fact. The decisive battle between Tallulah and. Rowan oh no! A real vivid image. <laughs> oh no! 
Okay, and I have to mention something slightly practical. It's made of rubber, and it is to some extent dirt-proof because of the dark color. <laughs> <laughs> Can't argue with that. Mm -hmm. I need a mouse pad. I'm gonna get one for sure. You should. Okay, next we have two acrylic standees here. Ooh. Oh. Flare, Amiya, and oh. And okay, they are doing, doing more acrylic. Gabriel, the great chief okay. Unique teeth. Both of them are not bad. Should we start with the roaring flare one? Okay. They are both multi-layered standees, which look kind of three-dimensional, and you can appreciate them from different angles. I like how Amiya and Chen stand by... That, they're the unique. They're definitely different. Yeah, I like that. And whereas the other one exudes a more casual feeling, it is a scene where you Nectis, Gabriel, and Tomimi go on a jungle adventure, wondering what will they find out there. Mm, something interesting, I think. Yes, I agree. Well... Hanging scroll? Okay, cool. Merch with design Spidey plushy. They're just as oh, that's cute. As In a muck set. They look so cool. I caught a bitey there. Mm -hmm. Well, let's deliver. This is uh, okay. okay. I can, they're, 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 they're doing good shit here. You can hang on a wall, a door, or wherever you like. The painting is on a rice paper. It is a special kind of paper that many ink paintings are painted on. And we decided to use the traditional Chinese mounting technique that we place the rice paper on a I, I like what I'm seeing here. Like, this is... You're, 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 already, you're already doing good shit. Where... Uh, this needs to happen more. And wait, is that Mr. Nothing on the scroll? I mean, the picture on the scroll? Yeah, yeah, I see that. Oh, I bet you didn't see Baidi was there too. Oh, too busy looking at the, the, the other Baidi. Yes. But sadly can't. It's so cute. The Bitey plushie is the cute enemy Bitey, obviously, from Who is Real. I think you guys... I think, like looking at it though, I think they might need... I need to look at it more in detail, but I think they need to do a better job with the plushie. I'm sorry. Survivor and filled with cotton, so I think it wouldn't be bad. We'll see though. Yeah. Lastly... I don't think they have a good... I don't think they did a good, um... Acrylic poster. And there are chibi characters on the mug. Saga, Mr. Nothing, Dusk, and Lava. Yep, yep. More especially, we have applied a unique mechanism. Mark they didn't do a good look at it. I, I, death, I don't know. We'll have to see. That you pour hot water into the mug, and then you place the mug on the coaster with the look of Marco Pui and Ming, and the black color will turn white. Cool. I want to try. Is this this is the, the back of Biter? Well, they will officially Bitey? be in the store very soon. Huh. So pay attention to our social media. Why do they? Of course. Okay. Well, we do have a special giveaway event. Doctors will have a chance to win the merch for free. How do we participate? We will post a giveaway event announcement on our official Twitter and Facebook accounts on July 26th. And the giveaway will last for five days. The prize will include some selected merch we just introduced and some limited CV signature boards. Signature boards? Can I get Aoyuki's signature? I want to get it too. Okay, for more details about the event, please pay attention to the okay. social media announcement on July. Or delivering it here, yeah, yeah. Next, I will have a big announcement. I've been waiting for this. Let I us know. Yeah. yeah. It's about a special crossover. Hear me out. Arknights will collaborate with Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege, developed by Ubisoft Montreal. Rainbow Six. Yes. Eight eighteen. We actually got a date. A new and unique we actually got a date on the E N side. These two games in terms of the worldview, gameplay, and the platform. Yes. The crossover event Operation Originium Dust will be going live on August 18th with new collaborated operators, outfits, furniture, and a new Yes! Animal. It's funny because it's two days after certain merch coming around the corner from CN. ...develop in a dusty desert with crisis and mysteries waiting for doctors to discover and solve. What would happen to the operators who step foot on a strange continent? And what will the adventure be like? Yeah. I bet doctors are craving to find out. To I feel out. like the game's gonna get a lot of boost to new players. The first meet between Team Rainbow and Rose Island and how they fight alongside each other. That will be the best part. 
and there will be four operators from Team Rainbow. On I think there's going to be a lot of player in flux this with this event. It is. Um, I know that many fans of Rainbow Six also call him Lord. That is actually also his outfit's name. I will circle back to it later. Tachanka is an event reward five star guard. Mm. During the event, doctors can redeem his tokens. Uh, I think they messed up on the star part. <laughs> Maybe? No? I don't know why there's one star at the guard. I hate the thing. Yeah, there's like four or five on the bottom. Like, okay, I think, I don't know what the whole yellow star thing is here, but I, that, that is, that is troll. That is troll. Ignore that one random star. Uh, it's right by the name there. I don't know why there's a golden star there. I <laughs> hope like okay the next operator who is joining arc knights is five star defender because it's on the bottom left but i don't know why they just move one star uh, although he's carrying all the other one stars actually don't pull skin skin and he's kept his ability to do high damage in terror hmm. you'll be surprised i bet the last one we're introducing is the six star operator a sniper. Oh, a sniper. I think it's only reasonable to see a sniper coming from a tactical shooter game, you know? Her name is Ash. As a team leader, Ash has been reliable. I'm really looking forward to seeing how she guides the team to start the adventures in Terra. Yes, one more thing I want to bring up is that the voiceover of these operators will are in English. in English. We hope that it could give doctors a new auditory experience. The three operators we just introduced will be available in the limited headhunting opening from August 18th to September 1st. Hmm. Doctors will have 12 days to get them among all the operators in this banner. And it is guaranteed huh. to pull six star sniper Ash in 120 rows. What's more, after the first time you pull operator Frost or Blitz, the next five star operator you get is guaranteed to be the other of these two. Yes. All the operators will be event limited and will not join any other standard banner after the event ends. We hope every doctor can get whoever you want. To do our utmost to help every doctor get the limited operators, mm. we'll be giving away an expert headhunting permit as a login reward. Mm. Doctors can claim it by simply logging into the game. Wow. And please notice that the permit will expire on September 1st. So please don't forget to log in before it's gone. We're also holding a sign-in event that gives doctors another expert headhunting permit by signing. Ooh, okay, okay. So it is literally to have I twenty four three poles. Have to sign in consecutively to claim all the That's rewards. actually really good. Miss all the fun of the events, will you? There won't be any single daily summons, but we will have four outfits this time for Ash, Tachanka, Schwartz, and Liskam. Mm. They'll be available at the store for a limited time during the event. Mm. I would definitely want to check them out, especially seeing Ash in that cute hat. It's like she's trying to do what locals do. <laughs> I love Schwartz wearing a hat with the same style. Yes. I'm starting to doubt her ears, though. Don't be. <laughs> okay. Along with the outfits, there will be a themed furniture set. Now, this so theme's pretty cool. All right, I, I had like it. Available during the events. Doctors can obtain the whole set by redeeming in the commissary, and you can also get it from the store. Mm. Okay. And don't forget the new Lucky Job furniture set, Walter Interior Sensations. Hmm. Mm, all right, sorry to say that, but I believe that's all for today. Oh, that went fast. It's been fun. Yeah. Thank you so much, doctors, for tuning in and sticking with us. Not all agreeing with them. Yeah. I know there was and will be a lot going on. And I really appreciate Alex for spending the last hour with us. Of course. Thank you. I enjoyed the time too. <laughs> Everything is going mostly in for me into Rainbow Six Siege. Dallas is get Dallas get out. Digital fun, huh? I definitely feel like we're 
going to get like a large influx of players for the um thing. その Okay, there's one part in this story that I'm the most curious about. Because I've kind of heard a hint about it. But it kind of hints about some dark stuff in the future of Ark Knights. Uh, but we'll see how that is. But that was the anniversary live stream reaction. Um, not that much else to say. Like, a lot of this I already knew. I, I, I tried to be quiet about it because for anyone new... Boom. I was actually surprised with the merch. I did not know what to expect because the merch has been sad and poor for a yen. Um, it's, it's not that been great. It's not been great. I've been mostly getting stuff from like China, like the like the T Mall store and stuff like that. For example, um, to a chess piece here. Um, but yeah. I'm s I, I like what I saw there. It's definitely unique. Um, but I have to see some things in quality, like the plushie. I think they do I I don't know what the heck they did with the plushie. I think they took took the wrong position and picture of it. Um but yeah. Shoot. Um I don't think there's really much else to know. I, I was kinda hoping they didn't do back to back, but they did. Um Six pins, one, two stands, one, two accurate stands, one scroll, and one plushie, one mouse pad, and one cup. Yeah, it's nothing too crazy. We'll see how that is in terms of the store and see the prices. Um, I like the pins. They were cute. Uh, the two accurate stands were pretty cool. I feel like they could do a lot more with that, but it's unique i think that's the thing to note about all of it it's unique so i don't know if there's issues because of that who knows uh but you have the scroll which is cool i don't know if i would even get that or not but who knows mouse pad was actually really dope i think probably the one that i'm like ooh, cool and the plushie as well but then i have like three other <laughs> that are coming around the corner um and i'm still using this razor so it's kind of like all these mouse pads i'm getting that i'm not really gonna be using um maybe who knows uh but and then you have the cup and the thing jp has life-size shit in amaya oh